The latest numbers from the Sheriff's Department show more than one in five inmates here tested positive for COVID-19. And the union representing corrections officers says 69 jailers are also out with the virus. The Ohio National Guard returning to Cleveland this week, this time inside the Cuyahoga County Jail, hit hard by COVID-19. We've had an explosion community-wide, statewide, nationally in COVID uh, infections, and the jails hasn't escaped. Not just inmates, staff too, says the union representing the county's corrections officers. Something broke down and it broke down really quickly. The union says more than 10% of its COs now out with COVID-19. The jail staffing has basically gotten to where it was 18 months ago at the peak of the county jail crisis from 2018, 2019. To try and fill the gaps, the county says beginning Wednesday, Ohio National Guardsmen and state prison workers will begin working inside the jail, assisting corrections officers. It comes as the county attempts to bring down the number of inmates inside the jail. The goal, give inmates more room to distance, isolate and quarantine in hopes of slowing the spread of the virus. Fewer uh, prisoners in the jail, the easier it is to protect them. Effective today, the Sheriff's Department says it will no longer house people charged with nonviolent misdemeanors and inmates picked up for parole violations. The county also asking the Ohio Supreme Court to order state prisons to pick up inmates sitting in jail but sentenced to prison time. But the county says that will probably amount to fewer than 200 out of the current 1,351 inmates. With jury trials now on hold because of the pandemic, County Executive Armin Budish says there's only so low the jail can go. We can't let people out who are violent. We can't endanger the community by uh, letting people out. And Budish says the numbers are likely to get worse here. That's because another 400 inmates are scheduled to get COVID-19 tests in the next couple of days. Yeah, this is so dangerous because don't forget people work in the jails too. the jailers, the, the CEOs, they're working there. They're getting sick as well. So what's the best way to control the numbers in jails? Uh, Steve Gaynor, I'll start with you. Well, I guess we're going to have to improve on our disinfectant and our cleaning. Um, going to try to do some stuff for distancing. But let's face it, we've had stories in the past where the inmates try to get COVID because they think they'll get released. So are they spreading it amongst themselves? And it's it's very difficult in a controlled environment where everybody's close close up to control the spread of a cold, the flu, any kind of infectious disease is going to spread around a closed environment. It's very tough. The the staff's going to get it, the inmates are going to get it. It you just got to improve the uh, you know the COVID restrictions that you have in place and hope that the inmates follow those rules and don't try to get released. But they're absolutely correct, and we're going to cover a story later that we can't release these people just because there's a COVID uh, problem in the jail. If we're releasing violent criminals or even criminals, we're putting them back in the public and causing the public to be at jeopardy. Yeah, all right, this is such a, a difficult situation. I mean, because yes. courtrooms are shut down, so the people who are in jail, a lot of them are awaiting their day in court, which is not coming, right? That, that They're just sitting there. Um, everything's shut down, but the, the, the world of crime never shuts down. Yeah, I mean, you would think this would be an easy problem to solve uh, because they're in jail. You just lock them down and isolate them. The problem is that might work in a maximum security facility that has solo, you know, where you're a lone inmate in one cell. But it's not the majority, the overwhelming majority of people that are in prison are in medium or minimum security facilities that are just packed. There's, there's overcrowding in all our prisons, and I know they've instituted, which I found quite unusual, even in the federal system now, where we have inmates that are being arrested, the, the inmates are, are doing uh, initial hearings and some of the other uh, evidentiary hearings via uh, uh, Zoom or some other type of video calling. So they are trying to w find ways to work around it, but it is a tough problem because really the people that are in there that are working uh, in these facilities are doing, are doing time also, they're just doing it on a shift. So, um, you know, I don't see this getting better. And, and when you look at some of the federal and state guidelines, there are, there are guidelines in there regarding prisons, vaccination of uh, inmates and workers, but each state has that ability to go ahead and move, move that up the scale of who's getting it next. 